Today in the closet, I'm here with my neighbour and friend Christine Moriarty. Um, Christine has spent her life in textiles and fibre and textile retailing and is hugely involved in the community. And when I was doing my research into ethical purchasing, Christine raised a really interesting um, topic around um, ethical purchasing being the domain of the middle classes. And, uh, and I just want to unpack that a bit with you. I suppose what I was meaning was that if you're just surviving financially, in other words, you're living, you're living on the bones of your bum, then actually you can't afford to think about purchasing environmentally or right, the right way. All you're doing is struggling to survive. Mm. So if you, if it's difficult to afford the transport to the supermarket, it's very unlikely you're going to pay a little bit extra for fair trade bananas or you know, well, it'll be, it, eggs it'll be or... about the price of those bananas and eggs that are going to make with a, with a decision whether they're even going to buy them. Mm. Yeah. So, do you think that's um, so do you think all, all the marketing towards ethical purchasing and ethical consumption is in that bandwidth around the more fortunate and it's excluding the less, the less fortunate? Of course it is, because that's all marketing is aimed for the, um, the biggest market, isn't it? But, but that biggest market is the only one who's going to afford or make it happen in their lives. Um, I just had a thought, but it disappeared. Um, the reality is, if you can't afford to pay your electricity bill, and you've only got $30 to survive on, what are you going to spend that $30 on? You're going to third, hopefully, you're going to spend it on uh, some flour and some butter and some sugar to make those things that you need. You're hardly going to spend it on um, the right cotton clothing. Or, <laughs> yeah. or the right um, butter, or whatever it is that these guys are telling you that you're going to spend, yeah. you're going to buy, because um, I'm sure that doesn't even, that doesn't even come into it. In fact, I'm not even sure whether those people can even even buy properly, because I'm I'm sure it does affect your mind and your brain and your psyche. If you're spending your whole time just on trying to survive, what are you really going to think about other than surviving? Mm. Mm. One, of, one of the issues that came up in my research was um, the individualisation of responsibility and how this has come around because of a lack of, of government policy that protects the environment and protects workers, so the dismantling of unions and um, sort of that neoliberal um, government policy that has made it um, put the market before people and, and the environment. Um, and so do you think that, that stronger policies around this would um, remove that responsibility from the individual and, and protect those less fortunate as well? It shouldn't ever stop you as an individual making the right decisions but what we want is for people to have enough to survive on and the government should take some responsibility so um, you know there's a lot of talk around the living wage for a start and mm. we know that everyone needs $21 an hour to to survive and 51% um, of the country are living below the poverty line so uh, in the past you might have had five or ten percent of people living below the poverty line but now you've got half the population who can't make the right decision and that must affect society which means the government has to step in first of all to give people enough to live on but secondly to make rules around what people who make things and let's face it most of them are only interested in the bottom line um, that make them do the right thing and aside from government policy, what else do you think? Do you think these other things we can do? I'd like to think there was. Do you think a move to compulsory unionism would assist? I do. I absolutely do. 
we've had um, basically um, labourers or working class people have had no general wage increase since 1985 when the government moved the um, non-compulsoryism of unionism. And so the only wages people have had since then is um, what government gives them once a year, the standard cost of living increase. <coughs> there have been no increases at all. And that, and that was just usually what I call the workers of the world, the labourers of the world, people who supposedly don't have qualifications. But that is eking. That situation is eking into all administration work. So there's an awful lot of administrators that I know, secretaries, personal assistants, who are also getting the minimum wage. Mm. Well, you've got that term now, the work, working poor yes. and zero uh, contracts. Yes. And, yeah. Yeah, everything's about the, um, the business. Mm. Nothing's oh. about the worker. No, that's right. They're just using that rhetoric to sell their product and make them th everyone think that they're, they're a good company. But in actual fact, all they're doing is marketing themselves. Mm. And oh, that's yeah, wrong. Yes, they're yeah. brainwashing. Yeah. Yeah. You know, they're telling everybody that they care about the environment, but in actual fact, they're just using that marketing tool. I mean, look at people take away the rubbish, waste minimisation and enviro care. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they're, just, they're just rubbish people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, back in the day they were called what they were. Well, it was a rubbish truck. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, that's so true. Yes. So those companies are all now using the things that... So people are caring, but the businesses have now cottoned on to the fact that they can use that to sell their themselves. Yeah. And there is no, there's no rules about whether they can do that. So what, so what do you think that individual can do to improve things? Nothing else. Well, look at your example. Christine has gone out and created a community garden for those who's fortunate in an empty lot and it supplies a number of households with fresh fruit and vegetables. But that's a huge amount of commitment to do that. It is, but I happen to like gardening. And um, it's my happy place. And I live in a community where most of the people are living on the bones of their bum. Sometimes they don't have enough money to buy food. But if they can go and get a bit of silver beet and a carrot and some spuds, then that might just relieve the pressure on them in life. Um, and, yeah, um, I've never lived in such a poor community, I have to say. Or I've never noticed people being so poor around me ever in my life, lifetime. And I don't know whether this is a sign of New Zealand at the moment or whether it's, you know, we have really gone down so, so far downhill in terms of the society that no one cares what people are getting to live to survive on. Um, you know, most of the people here, they pay their rent, they pay their electricity bill, and sometimes they put some money aside for for petrol, but by and large, they don't have enough to live on. They do have days when they have nothing to eat. Mm. It is absolutely appalling in the country where we have so much. Mm. So Christine's moved from a Wellington suburb um, into the Horofanua, and it is one of the New Zealand's lowest socio-economic region. Mm. incredibly beautiful incredible incredible pro poverty and massive massive environmental challenges mm. there's indications that we're moving out of one um, economic system into the next one so we're moving into a post um, what is it called yeah, post-capitalism. I mean, well, post-consumer. Yes. Um, mm. Market. <laughs> will, that, will the drivers not be different? You'd like to think so, wouldn't you? But, you know, the likes of people like me just had more money to spend. Oh, well, time for activism. It is. Check your type of activism. <laughs> well, I don't know about activism, but I think you should, you should care for your fellow human beings because society is a reflection on you. Yeah. That's right. Absolutely. Yes. But yeah. you are an activist. I am an activist only because society is so terrible. 
and the environment is so terrible. I'd, I'd rather be sitting at home doing some knitting or some painting, but actually I can't because it's so terrible out there. Mm. But thank God for people like you. <laughs> it's Christine. Okay.